So at this point, um, I'll pivot a little bit and talk about some open, open XDR examples and really see it in action, right? And I always love these action packed pictures in the sock and the ATT socks got all these great, you know, they actually have a sock in New Jersey which has got all the cool TV screens and all that stuff and it's always cool to kind of look at that. But uh, an example of when XDR was you know, really in action, this idea of open XDR, we um, you know, get anonymized but you know, detected threats, uh, a threat coming in and a customer in that customer scenario was able to pretty quickly, uh, the product itself on the endpoint detected it as ransomware, alerted it, blocked it, and did that on the endpoint of the affected customer. That then alerted into the single pane of glass, right? So we're talking about this open XDR solution, was able to see that in the pane of glass, immediately provided additional context. Okay, here's the, the asset that was impacted, were there any vulnerabilities, what other Threat Intel was associated you know, with that particular endpoint that attack. The, they were able to look into it. They said, okay, it looks like this is what's going on. Um, saw that there's a particular URL that you can go out and call and pull down the ransomware. And so being able to look at that additional context and you know, be smart about it, they were then able to say, okay, let's add a URL policy to our web gateway solution. And this was all done with the customer, the customer actually had to do all of this, and together they were able to add a URL policy to block anyone trying to access that ransomware URL. So kind of cool in that you, know, you have a lot of data coming in. Of course, if they had the endpoint solution, they would have detected it, they would have stopped it, end the story, right? And that's what a lot of the next-gen endpoint solutions, really all the endpoint solutions, of today are doing, right? They're, they're detecting the ransomware at the endpoints, some better than others, they're blocking it. But that's just one step, right? You've blocked it. But can you get the additional data and context around that? As we mentioned, right, understanding were there vulnerabilities that were taken advantage of? Was there other threat intel indicative of what the threat's going on? Well, yeah, it looks like, you know, there was this additional context of this user went out to this URL, downloaded that ransomware. Okay, that's good. Dug into it, saw that there may be other users also accessing that URL. Let's go in and just block it. And so that nobody's able to go and access that URL. So that's where that additional context, the integrations across multiple solutions. Of course, if it's all one solution, that's great, but a lot of times you'll have more than one. So being able to pull all that together into one is really is one really key thing. So that's that's the first example. And the second example is um, a little bit you know, simpler, again, all anonymous, and just an idea that I think a lot of you guys have probably seen. You know, you, you see a threat coming in, you look at it, you get a context of it, okay, there's something going on. Maybe in some cases you immediately start going into like an incident response um, type procedure, you maybe have an IRR team jump in, you start pulling in that additional context, you start seeing, you know, what other threats are coming in. And I think that's where you see the example of pulling in the additional data so you can do a smarter incident response. And that can then help you improve your security postures in the future, right? So you take what you've learned, right? You, you say, okay, this is what we did in the incident response. We're gonna apply maybe these security solutions in the future, we're gonna add this new policy, we're gonna change our incident response procedures. So getting that visibility, beyond just being able to stop the threat at the moment, but also being able to help your security posture in the future and learning from that. And that's where that additional visibility comes in. If it's simple and you just block it, you call it a day, then you don't get that. And that's the promise of OpenXDR, that additional context, and that is key. And then the last one, here that we'll talk about is the importance of, um, or the, the faster time to response, right? When we talked about swivel chairing, you know, you're on the one solution. If you're trying to make any idea, like you're trying to take all these different solutions together and you're trying to go, okay, it looks like I see this here. Let me go to this one solution where I'm gonna do a sandboxing. I'm gonna jump into this other product and see what kind of threat intel information that I see here. Let me go here and you're jumping from product to product. You're trying to stitch it all together. That's gonna to reduce your time to detect. And the second part of that is responding, right? If you have to log into 10 different solutions to respond, again, that first example, 
detect the threat on the endpoint, we were able to even do rollbacks directly onto that endpoint to a clean state, and then apply the policy to the, the web gateway or to a SASE solution. That is something that you want to do in one product, one single view, one console. Not have to jump into another product, do it there, another product, do it there. That reduces your time to respond. So you want faster time to detection and you want faster time to response. And that's you know, some of the scenarios that we've seen in kind of a generalized way.